Listen to this. A male boxer beats his female opponent in just 46 seconds in the Olympics. Things are just getting weird. So in this video, we're going to break it all down. Welcome back to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this out to more people just like you and me. The Woke Olympics of 2024. Yes, the Woke Olympics of 2024 already caught heat for that ridiculous opening ceremony that they put on for the world to, to all watch. But this is getting even weirder now. There's a male boxer in the Olympics just beat up his female opponent left her quitting within 46 seconds and she cried in the end. I mean, it's just getting crazy. Now, before I go any further and give you guys what I think about this, let's go back to some of the clips so you guys could get caught up with what's going on. Let's play that first video. Well, this was a moment of history. It happened earlier today in France and a major controversy too has now erupted out of Paris. An Algerian boxer shown in the red uniform who failed a gender eligibility test last year mm. has now won an opening fight after only 46 seconds. Her opponent breaking down in tears, calling it, quote, unjust. Uh, Greg Palcott picks it up from London with more on what happened in the ring. Greg. Hey, Bill. Yeah, big controversy indeed at the Olympics. A boxer deemed a biological male beating an Italian female opponent with the Italian crying out, I couldn't take it anymore. Despite failing that gender test by the International Boxing Association and being banned from an international tournament last year, Algerian 25-year-old Iman Khalif was okayed by Olympic authorities to compete. And apparently today it was a very one-sided fight with Italian Angela Carini, also 25. After just 46 seconds and several sharp punches to the head, including the nose by Khalif, Carini abandoned the fight, threw her helmet to the floor, stormed off the boxing ring, and in fact went on to say that she had never felt such strong blows in a contest before. Now, Algerian Khalif has competed for several years in other international tournaments, including the Olympics, but was banned last year due to, according to officials, elevated levels of testosterone. Algerian sports officials have called the charges against Khalif baseless, but others have raised concerns about the health of opposing athletes when, according to one, a man fights a woman. And Khalif is not the only one getting attention. Taiwan boxer Lin Yu Ting is competing in the Olympics, including a fight tomorrow, and has also been deemed a biological male, according to the International Boxing Association. Okay, this is getting this is getting ridiculous. This is at the Olympic level, right? There are people who are training four years, eight years out for this moment for them to compete for their country. So l let's first start with my bottom line up front point. If they want men to compete in women's sports so badly, then just go make a trans Olympics, right? Just go do that. Have trans people compete against other trans people. Do that. That way, everybody's on the same page about what's in the ring, who's in the ring, and what those requirements are. Now, let's actually go through why there are people who believe this is the right thing. We're going to get into the International Boxing Association, the people that actually did the test on these two individuals, and they both failed that test, right? Because you have to prove that you are a man or you are a woman. They draw your blood, blah, 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 blah. And they failed and they did not go through with their appeal. And so we will read that. But let's talk about why there are people that are going along with this, right? The number one thing that always comes up people who agree to do things like this, even though they're sick, in my opinion, is inclusion. That whole DEI thing again, right? Inclusion. We want to make sure everybody is included. Okay, understand something. Inclusion should never supersede safety. Let me say that again. Inclusion should never supersede safety. We just saw what happened to President Trump. When inclusion, hey, we want 30% more women in the Secret Service, takes priority of safety, this is exactly what happens. Which leads me to my second point about this is they want to come out and say, well, we must be fair. We want everybody included and then we want it to be fair. But help me understand something. How could it be fair if there's a biological male competing 
in a sport called boxing, which people have died from, by the way, people have serious brain injuries, by the way, um, competing with a woman. How is that fair? How can that woman truly feel like she's in a fair fight? Right. So that second point is bullshit as well. And then, of course, you have these people saying, well, that's the way they identify. They identify as a man. So they are one. Listen, your psychological beliefs cannot supersede biology. There's XX and XY. Now, is there one person out of probably 10 billion humans on this planet that has some type of mutation where they have both of them? Yes. But is that a overwhelming common thing? No. Should we change sports and our professional industries and the Olympics to tailor to that point zero 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 one of a mutation? No. This is getting out of hand. So I don't care about what they identify as. I care about sending the best to represent the country in a fair manner, meaning fair competition. Women will compete against women. Men will compete against men. And let's take a closer look at some of the clips from the fight uh, showing uh, how this person quit within 46 seconds. It's, it's actually pretty sad, but we, we have to take a look. So let, let, let's pause this. I mean, come on, man. Look, look at that face, right? I mean, and I, I think sometimes when people are watching boxing, they don't understand how hard that impact is to someone's face. Like, that, that, I mean, there's a reason why people get brain injuries from boxing, okay? All right? Th th those gloves, I mean, it's no joke, right? And good thing they have the pr protective gear on, right? Because obviously in regular boxing, things like that does not exist. But in the Olympics, you know, there's some level of safety, so that's a good thing. I bet if she didn't even have that guard on, she would have been knocked out cold. I mean, it's just, it's just really sad. But look how her head bounces back right let me go through this boom just look at that look look how her head snaps it's just like boom right and so that it's really sad sad to see now this is actually a older clip uh of a different fight uh look at that she's she's done i mean boom watch this watch this look at that just look look at the stance dude. that's a dude right there there's no question look at that oh and then hit her in the back of the head. That's that's one way for someone to literally die. If you get hit in the back of the head, it's it's a it's a game changer. That's why it's usually against the rules in boxing. So, anyways, yeah. So there's that clip. All right. So let, let's take a look at the IAB, which came out and really made uh, the Olympics look bad. Okay. So this is on the X platform. And on their page, they posted, IBA remains committed to ensuring competitive fairness in all of our events. We absolutely condemn the inconsistencies and in eligibility to compete in the boxing competition held at the Paris Olympic Games 2024. Now, um, let's actually click on here because there is a statement that they uh, put out. And um, here's what they did. Further to the IBA statement made yesterday evening regarding the removal of ineligible athletes from the IBA female competitions, we reiterate our stance and firm position. So let me zoom in a little bit more and then explain what's going on here. So the IBA, right? It's the International Boxing Association. So what happens is, um, obviously, if you want to qualify for the Olympics and you want to be in a good consideration for the Olympics, you obviously are already participating in boxing. And one of the big organizations that a lot of the Olympians are competing when it comes to boxing is the IBA. IBA remains committed to ensuring competitive fairness in all of our events. We absolutely condemn the inconsistency and eligibility to compete in boxing competition held in the Paris Olympic Games 2024. To any rate, both, and they name drop, by the way, post-testing did not meet, listen to this, did not meet the required eligibility criteria to compete within the female category of our respective events. The decision made by IBA on 24 March 2023 was then ratified by the IBA Board of Directors on 25 March 2023. The official record of this decision can be accessed on the IBA website here, IBA Board of Directors uh, meeting minutes. The urgent nature of the decision was justified as the safety of our boxers is our top priority. Wasn't I just saying that? Safety 
should come before inclusion. I don't want to hear your bullshit inclusion. I want to hear safety. I want to hear competition. That is not a competition. Listen, if that was two dudes going at it and one dude knocked the other guy out in five seconds, I'm still upset. I want to see people compete at the highest level. I want to see people give us their best. So let, let's keep reading a little bit more. The disqualification was based on two trustworthy tests conducted on both athletes in two independent laboratories as follows. So the laboratory in Istanbul in 2022 and the laboratory in New Delhi uh, 2023. For clarification, one of the fighters did not appeal the IBA decision to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, thus rendering the decision legally binding. And then the boxer that we just saw through those clips initially appealed the decision, but withdrew the appeal during the process, also making that IBA decision legally binding. And so it leads to this final statement that I want to share with you guys, and then we'll get to the end of the video. The IBA will never support any boxing bouts between the genders as the organization puts the safety and well-being of our athletes first. We are protecting our women and their rights to compete in the ring against equal rivals and will defend and support them in all instances. Their hopes and dreams must never be taken away by organizations unwillingly to do the right thing under difficult circumstances. So we are now living in a time where people are getting pressured to cave to this whole inclusion, this whole equity conversation, right? And the problem with it is it violates common sense. That's number one. But, you know, we always get the whole pushback. Well, what is common sense? You see, that's the problem is you're so far removed from reality. You don't even understand what common sense is, right? But that, so that's the number one thing. But the, the second thing is there's a reason why there's a male and a female category in all of sports. It's just like NBA. You think any of the women in the WNBA can compete with LeBron James? Get out of here with that. Like we need to knock it off with the nonsense because we're trying to do things in the name of inclusion. Why don't we do things in the name of safety, in the name of competition, in the name of what's always been working since the beginning of time? If you guys want these people to compete so badly, then go create your own league. That's what always blows my mind about this whole trans movement. They want their rights. They want to be respected. They want to compete. Fine, go create your own leagues then. You got a males league, you got a females league, and then you could have a trans league. At least I would respect that. At least I know nobody's being put at risk. See, I could I could reason like that, even though I still probably wouldn't support it or don't really agree with it, but I could respect it because they are respecting men and women and their rights. And so as I wrap up this video, this is what I want to say. This is an infringement on people's rights. They're inalienable rights. A woman should never have to think about, hey, am I competing with a man? So if we want to do this whole inclusion rhetoric, well, why don't we include women and in making sure that women will compete only against women? You're going to have people that you'll see on social media, probably even some of your family members, and they're going to say, oh, no, it's OK. It's OK. No, it's not OK. People are getting hurt. It just is not OK. So that's my mindset about this. What about yours? What do you guys think about this man competing uh, in the Olympics, uh, beating up his opponent, who's a female, in 46 seconds? Uh, what do you think about the IBA's response to all this? And what do you think overall about this whole inclusion and discrimination rhetoric that they try to use to get men into women's sports? I want to hear what you guys have to say uh, and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace.